This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on Insurance. I am an attorney who has retired from the practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant and expert witness, an author, and producer of these videos. Today I'd like to talk about the fortuity doctrine, which arises from the basic concept upon which insurance was founded so long ago in ancient Sumeria. Insurance covers risks, not losses, that were planned, intended, or anticipated by the insured. It has always been the view of insurers that losses that were expected by the insured could not be insured. To do so would have a counterproductive effect. No one would buy insurance until they were certain they would have a loss. The concept of spreading the risk on which insurance is based would be defeated. The creation of losses would be encouraged. For example, a person decides to gain a competitive advantage over his competitor by slandering him. He first purchases a CGL policy with a personal injury coverage that includes coverage to defend against slander and libel and immediately thereafter commences his deliberate attack on his competitor, expecting to be protected by the CGL insurer. Or a person decides to get even with his neighbor by assaulting him with a baseball bat. He knows his neighbor will sue, so he buys a CGL or a homeowner's policy the day before, expecting the insurer to defend him. Or a manufacturer concludes he can make a greater profit if he uses an unsafe but cheap gas tank in his vehicle. He knows some will fail and kill or maim his customers. He buys extra insurance to cover the exposure to his customers that the engineers tell him is inevitable since the insurance is less expensive than the cost to build the vehicle with a safe gas tank. Or a person buys an expensive house with a large insurance policy with limits far in excess of the value of the house and then sets it on fire to collect from the insurance company. An accident or occurrence is never present when the insured performs a deliberate act unless some additional, unexpected, independent, and unforeseen happening occurs that produces the damage. When the injury was caused by the insured's manufacture and sale of products, the manufacture and sale of which were deliberate and intentional acts and there was no additional, unexpected, independent, and unforeseen happenings that caused the infringement alleged by a plaintiff or the indemnity obligation. The court concluded that the conduct giving rise to the underlying acts, action was not an accident, nor an occurrence within the coverage provision, because there was no potential basis for coverage the court concluded that there was no duty to defend. There is a concept known as the loss in progress rule, which codifies the fundamental principle of insurance law that an insurer cannot insure against a loss that is known or apparent to the insured. The public policy rule is premised on the view that to hold the insurer liable for a progressive and continuing property loss that was discovered before the carrier insured the risk would be to impose upon the insurer a guarantee of the good quality of the property insured, which liability under the policy the insurer had not assumed. For example, in Montrose Chemical versus Admiral Insurance Company, where the existence and extent of injuries were unknown from the insured standpoint, 
coverage of continuous or progressively deteriorating property damage under a CGL policy did not offend the loss in progress rule, at least in 1995, and since then. The fortuity doctrine, or loss in progress rule, where damage began to occur before the inception of the policy, requires that as a matter of law, no part of the loss may be insured against. The fortuity doctrine only precludes a party from insuring against the loss that has occurred or is certain to occur within the term of the policy. In addition, all policies issued after the knowledge is obtained, if there was no disclosure of the ongoing loss, would be subject to rescission of the policy by the insurer in most states, or at least in many states, if the misrepresentation or concealment was even innocent and not intentional. A fortuitous event is defined as an event which, so far as the parties to the contract are aware, is dependent on chance. It may be beyond the power of any human being to bring the event to pass, it may be within the control of third persons. It may even be a past event, such as the loss of a vessel, provided that the fact is unknown to the parties. In WC and AN versus Continental Casualty, a 2015 decision of the Fourth Circuit, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeal was faced with the allegation that Continental wrongfully denied coverage under a policy and should be required to pay the cost Miller incurred defending a 2010 lawsuit. The policy contains several relevant provisions. The policy includes coverage for employment practices liability, directors and officers liability, and entity liability. General terms and conditions at the beginning of the policy apply throughout. Under the policy, Continental will provide coverage for Miller for claims against Miller made during the coverage period for a wrongful act by an insured person. Continental reasoned that the ads, acts alleged in the 2006 lawsuit and the fraudulent conveyance and other acts alleged in the 2010 lawsuit were interrelated wrongful acts constituting a single claim. Under the terms of the policy, such a claim should be deemed to have been made in 2006 before the policy coverage period began on November 1, 2010. Continental therefore concluded the claim was not insured by the policy. The policy's definition of interrelated wrongful acts is expansive. This definition is not ambiguous, particularly on the facts before the court, and apply it in accordance with the ordinary meaning of the words used, because that's what courts are supposed to do. If the words are clear and not ambiguous, they must apply them in accordance with the ordinary meaning of the words. Therefore, the conduct alleged in the 2006 and 2010 lawsuits share a common nexus of fact and are, therefore, interrelated wrongful acts under the policy's definition. As the District Court ob observed, the two lawsuits are linked by a multitude of common facts. Because they involve interrelated wrongful acts, the two lawsuits are part of the same claim under the policy. Pursuant to the policy provisions, the court had no option but to deem the claims in the 2010 lawsuit first made on the date on which the 2006 lawsuit was filed. March 17, 2006. As the district court determined, because March 17, 2006 was outside the policy period, 
Continental Properly Denied Coverage. This case is a variation on the fortuity doctrine. You can't buy insurance to protect you against an action that has already occurred. Since the suit against the insurer related to two interrelated wrongful acts, the claim was first made four years before the inception of the policy, and coverage was therefore unavailable. If the insured knew when purchasing the policy, as did the litigants in WCNAN versus Continental, that there is a substantial probability that it will suffer or has already suffered a loss, the risk ceases to be contingent and becomes a probable or known loss, which is by definition of insurance uninsurable. Therefore, the fortuity doctrine holds that insurance is not available for losses that the policyholder knows of, planned, intended, or is aware are substantially certain to occur. The known loss rule is a variant, holding that an insured may not obtain insurance to cover a loss that is known before the policy takes effect. That is, an insured can't have his house burned down and then run to an insurance company and buy fire insurance to protect him for the loss that had already burned down his house. People who are accused of tortious conduct are loath to report the accusation to their insurer. Even though they know someone incurred property damage and would continue to incur property damage, are obligated by every liability policy written in the United States to promptly report that known loss to the liability insurer. Further, since liability insurance only insures against fortuitous losses, a loss that occurred or began and continues before the issuance of a policy cannot be fortuitous. Consider Zepp Realty versus Sentinel, where the United States Court of Appeal for the District of Maryland in 2018 found that Zepp's seeking of damages for an alleged breach of contract because Sentinel refused to defend or indemnify Zepp because it was excluded by the known loss provision of the Sentinel policy was decided by the court and the suit that had arisen because Zepp claimed Sentinel wrongfully refused to defend and indemnify it under their insurance policy with Sentinel in a real estate related lawsuit filed against Zepp. In October of 2014, Robert and Kimberly Ruland sued Zepp setting forth allegations against Zepp in his capacity as both a real estate developer and real estate agent. In the underlying action, the Rulins alleged they purchased property in a subdivision developed and marketed by Zepp on which they experienced periodic flooding during rain events. The Rulins first experienced the flooding in the fall of 2011 at which time they notified Zepp of the problem via email. According to the rule on Zepp and the home builder acknowledged their responsibility and undertook efforts to correct the defects. The rule ons again reached out to Zepp in May of 2014 to discuss the flooding problem. This time they described flooding with terms such as a floodplain, a swamp, and a 40 foot wide by one and a half inch deep river. After receiving this email, the Rulons claimed Zepp again visited the property and undertook repair efforts, which were ultimately unsuccessful. Then in October of 2014, the Rulons sued Zepp and other defendants over the defects. Sentinel informed of the underlying action requested Sentinel to defend and indemnify Zepp and they refused. Zepp 
ultimately settled the underlying action with the Rulands for $25,000, but it incurred $108,000 in attorney's fees. Sentinel moved for summary judgment, and under Maryland law, an insurance policy is construed according to contract principles, and under the objective law of contract interpretation, the written language embodying the terms of an agreement will govern the rights and liabilities of the parties, irrespective of the intent of the parties at the time they entered into the contract. The obligation of an insurer to defend its insured under a contract provision is determined by the allegations in the tort actions. If the plaintiffs in the tort suit allege a claim covered by the policy, the insurer has a duty to defend. Allowing an insurance company to refuse to defend an insured based solely on allegations in a claim filed by an uninterested third party leaves the insured with no choice but to rely on a plaintiff to file a well-pleaded complaint in order to establish a potentiality of coverage under the insured's insurance policy. An insurance company, however, in Maryland may not use extrinsic evidence to contest coverage if the underlying complaint establishes a potentiality of coverage. Most relevant is the exclusion for known losses. Specifically, the policy states coverage only applies where prior to the policy period, no insured knew that bodily injury or property damage had occurred in whole or in part. If such a listed insured knew prior to the policy period, that bodily injury or property damage occurred, then any continuation, change, or resumption of such bodily injury or property damage during or after the policy period will be deemed to have been known prior to the policy period. Where the policy contains its own known loss provision and where ZEP clearly received written claim for damages or was aware of property damage had occurred or began to occur, the provision has to be enforced as written, and the district court agreed. The mere knowledge of offense that may potentially create liability in the future must be enforced according to its own terms, even though the common law known loss doctrine only bars coverage where liability is substantially The policy's known loss provision did not require ZEP know of its liability for the damage with certainty. Additionally, it is irrelevant under the policy whether the flooding as alleged in the underlying action was worse than described in the original emails to ZEP because the policy specifically states, quote, any continuation, change, or resumption of property damage during or after the policy period will be deemed to have been known prior to the policy period. Close quote. The lesson Zepp learned is to never wait to report a potential loss to his insurer and to inform every insurer from whom he seeks insurance the existence of a potential loss. Zepp knew the Rulon's property was suffering damage and that they were upset and required the problem to be fixed. He tried, but it was not fixed. Suit was filed and there was no coverage because Zepp knew about the property damage before he acquired the policy from Sentinel. Fortuity has been described by one court as follows. Quote, because the purpose of insurance is to protect insureds against unknown or fortuitous risks, fortuity is an inherent requirement of all risk insurance policies. The fortuity doctrine precludes coverage for a known loss or a loss in progress. A known loss is a loss the insured knew had occurred prior to making the insurance contract. A loss in progress occurs when the insured is or should be aware of an ongoing progressive loss at the time the 
policy is purchased. Insurance coverage is precluded where the insured is or should be aware of an ongoing progressive or known loss at the time the policy is purchased. The concept of fortuity is essential to insurance, whether codified as in New York or merely recognized by the courts of the various states. This video has been adapted from my book, Zalma on Insurance Claims, Part 105, Second Edition, which is available as a Kindle book or as a paperback from Amazon.com and can be found at my website, Zalma.com, along with all of my other books by clicking on the Insurance Claims Library. If you found this video to be of interest or useful to you, please refer it to your colleagues. It's free. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel, and my blog so that you can learn about future blog posts and videos. Thank you for your attention.